what's up people, Marco here, welcome back to another lesson. Let's talk about triads. Now, a triad is probably one of the most powerful tools that we can use to understand chords, create beautiful chord progressions, and also create interesting and exciting technique exercises. Now, the only downside of practicing and understanding triads is the fact that when we play these chords on the guitar, we end up with so many shapes. And so today I want to show you a practical approach to triads. I want to show you how to build triads, how to play them across the neck, and how to use triads melodically. Now, first things first, what's a triad? A triad is the most simple chord that we have in music. It's made up of just three notes, the root note, the third, and the fifth. And based on the intervals between these notes, then the triad can be a major triad with the root note major third and the perfect fifth, a minor triad with the root note a minor third and the perfect fifth, a diminished triad with the root note the minor third and the diminished fifth, and the augmented triad with the root note major third and augmented fifth. As you can see, guys, I was playing the three notes of each triad as close as possible. In fact, I had one note per string. For this reason, they can be organized on the guitar so that there is a triad for each set of three strings. Let me give you an example. This is a C major triad. This chord is made up of three notes, the root note C, the major third E, and the perfect fifth G. The first thing we notice is that the triad is named according to the root note. So the root note of this triad is the note C, therefore this is a C triad. Now we call it major, C major, because the quality of the intervals make up a major chord. We have the root note, the major third, and the perfect fifth. Now this C major triad is not different than the C major open chord that you already know. This is still a C major triad, but the difference is that now we are doubling some of the notes. C, E, G, C. Now, because there are three notes in a triad, that means there are three possible positions. And this is when things get a little bit more challenging because we can play the C major triad like this, but also like this and like this. Now, to make what I played easier for you to understand, just think about the C major open chord I just played. If we play this chord like this, we will call this a C major triad. However, if we play the C major like this, so I'm only playing the D, the G, and the B string, I can still call this chord a C major triad. And if I play the top three strings, so the G, the B, and the E string, this is still a C major triad. So how does it work? Well, there are three positions. The first one is the root position, which will have the root note as the lowest note of the chord. The second position is the first inversion, which means that the third of the chord is the lowest note. In this case, I'm playing E, which is the third, G, which is the fifth, and C again, which is the root note. The third position is the second inversion, which is played with the fifth of the chord on the bass. So it's G, C, and E. Now let's keep things really practical, guys. I don't want to go too deep into the music theory because there are already like thousands of videos about triads, but I want to keep it practical. I want to show you practical exercises that you can practice, right? So that you can visualize all these shapes. 
Now, the first thing is that I want you to understand that there are three positions, right? Root position, first inversion, and second inversion. And there is a shape for each one of these positions on each set of three strings, meaning I can play the C major chord in root position here, 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 and here. As you can see, the root note is always the lowest, right? Now, I can do the same thing with the first inversion. So the C major can be played with the third on the bass. And also with the fifth on the bass. And then, of course, you can do the same with other chords. So, as you can see, it becomes sometimes extremely challenging to practice triads because we have so many different shapes. Now, let me give you a few exercises. The first thing is to come up with a chord progression where you can play both major and minor chords. Let's just keep things in C major so that it's easy and you are, you know, already familiar with the chords. Let's say that we want to play a chord progression such as C major, F, G, and C. And then we have two minor chords, A minor, D minor, and then we go back to the F major and G major. So the goal is to use this triad over this chord progression. Now exercise number one, guys, and remember that all the tabs and the diagrams are available on my Patreon page if you want to download it. Exercise number one, we're going to keep things really, really simple. And so we're going to play the chord progression with the root position only. So we have the C major chord, which is played like this. This is the shape, root note, third and fifth. Now we know that root note is on the G string, right? So if I want to play the F major, I need to bring this C all the way up to the F major, to the note F, to build the F major chord. So we have C, F, G, and C. Now we have two minor chords, the A minor and the D minor. So the minor shape, of course, is going to be slightly different. We still have the root note A on the G string. Then we have the C, which is the minor third, and the E, which is the perfect fifth. For the A minor chord, we're going to play um, an open string, right? But we could play here and, you know, have this shape. But let's play here. D minor, so we have the root note on the G string fret number seven. Back to the F major, G major, and C major. So as you can see, we played the chord progression with the root position of each triad. Now let's change set of strings and we go one string down. So now we have the D, the G, and the B string. And we're gonna do the same exercise. Now the root position is this one. We have C, E, and G. So I have C major, F major, G major, and C. A minor, D minor, F, and G, and C. Now let's change set of strings again, and we have now the fifth, the fourth, and the third string. We're still playing with the same root position. So we have C major, F major, G major, and C. Now, A minor, D minor, F, G, and C. Last set of strings, the same chord shapes. C major, F major, G major, and C. A minor, D minor, and F major, G major, and C. 
Now the cool thing is that once you understand the first exercise, you realize that you can do the same exact thing with the other positions. So we could do the same exercise, exactly the same exercise with the first inversion. So we could have C, F, G, and C, A minor, D minor, F, G, and C. Now we're going to bring it one set of strings down and we have C and F, G and C. Now A minor, D minor, and F and G and C. The most important thing, guys, is that you always visualize where the root note of the chord is. For example, when I'm playing this chord, I always think of the root note. So I know that the root note of this chord is on the second string. So if I want to play an F major, I have to bring this chord, the same chord shape, uh, right here where I have the note F, and then the G, and back to the C, which is played with an open string. Uh, otherwise, we will have to play it here. But if you bring this one one octave lower, you have the same shape, it's just the same thing, but with the G string open. Let's go one set of strings down. We have the C major with the third on the bass. So we have now E, G, and C. And we do the same thing. Now I know that the root note is on the G string, right? So I have C major, F major, because this is an F, a G major, or here and back to the C. Now A minor, D minor, F major, G, and C. Same thing on the last set of strings, right? Uh, C major, so we need the C right here. E, G, and C. F major. G major and C, A minor and D minor and F, G and C. Now the last one is the second inversion which has the fifth of the chord on the bass. Or we can play one octave lower. So we need the G on the bass, but this is the shape without open strings. So I have the root note of the chord on the second string. So C major, F, G, and C. Now A minor, D minor, and F, and G, and... Second set of strings, C major, F major, G major, and C. A minor, D minor, F, G, and back to the C. Two more set of strings. We need the G on the bass. This is the E shape, what we call E shape. So C major, F major. I know that the root note is on the D string now, yeah? And F, and G, and C. Now A minor, D minor, F, G and C. And the last set of strings. Beautiful. F, G, and C. A minor. D minor. F, G, and C. Now, of course, guys, the ultimate level will be that you are able to navigate the fretboard with all these positions root position and inversions. For example, I don't necessarily have to play the C and then jump all the way to the F like this. I can stay in one position, but I have to use inversions, right? C, F major, first inversion, G major the same, back to the C major root position. Now, let's just keep the same chord progression. C major, F major, second inversion, G major, second inversion, C major, first inversion. 
as you can see now, I'm kind of staying in the same position when I play the three chords and I don't have to necessarily jump back and forth. If you put the exercise together with a different set of strings, it becomes really, really interesting. C major. F major. G major. And C major. A minor. D minor. F major. And G. And C major. Now I'm gonna stop right now because I know that you are already extremely overwhelmed. I'm not even sure you made it to the end of the video, so hopefully you did, but I know that this stuff is overwhelming and it takes time. So really start step by step, guys. Start with the root position and kind of you know navigate um, back and forth on the fretboard. And then as you become better, you can add more positions. It takes months to you know master all these triads. Um, but just keep trying, keep adding new things step by step and enjoy the process. And then at some point you will be able to, you know, play these chords and play these triads uh, without necessarily have to think too much about, uh, you know, chords and notes and positions and um, inversions and stuff like that. Now I'm going to leave you to practice all these beautiful sounding chords. Take it step by step, enjoy the process. I'll see you next time.